this series of videos I'm going to be attempting to repair two of these NCR machines. These are not mine, they belong to somebody else. I've just got them here for repair. Now the owner has done quite a lot of work on both of them. He's brought them both up to a very nice state, so they're very nice and clean, look very good, and he's carried out some repairs. He's carried out some repairs to the power supplies, he's carried out some repairs to the boards, replaced a few RAM chips, that sort of thing and he's got them to the point where they will boot up to the start screen. I haven't tried powering these on yet, we'll try that in a few minutes. Um, but there's an issue with uh, both of them. Uh, the two machines are different. This one's a black and white one, actually green uh, screen, but we'll call it black and white. And the other one's uh, colour, sort of. And um, we'll start with this one. Now I believe the fault with this one, or two faults with this one, are that the floppy drive interface doesn't work. Floppy drive is obviously not fitted and neither is the hard drive which normally sits in here. Um, we'll look at those in a little while. Um, but the floppy drive interface doesn't work on this machine and the um, hard drive interface card doesn't work either. We'll look at both of those later. Now from what he tells me he has tried a, uh, a lone hard drive controller board and that made the machine work. Now, apart from the floppy drive issue, of course. Now, that doesn't guarantee that the fault is on the hard drive interface card, although it does tend to point in that direction. Unfortunately, I don't have access to that uh, long card. I don't have any working um, hard drive interface cards, so we'll have to do this the hard way. And uh, the second machine, the color one, I believe the floppy drive interface does work but it has the same type of fault in that the hard drive interface card doesn't work. So uh, old school type drives, we'll have a look at those uh, later on. Um, but what we'll do to start with is power this up and see if it does indeed boot to the uh, startup screen. Um, as far as I know, these should boot to a, um, a, load, a boot loader. It's trying to load from either floppy disk or hard disk. I've only ever repaired three or four of these in the past and the last one was quite some time ago so my memory's a bit uh, hazy on these uh, so we'll have to kind of try and um, catch up as we go along. Now the first thing we'll do like I said is we'll power this up. I do advise uh, people not to power machines up when they first start working on them because this has been powered up many times by the owner I think it's fairly safe to power it up got it plugged into the um, bench transformer so it is current limited and we'll power it up. Um, I think they beep when you power them up but I can't remember if that's in response to the self-test or just um, like a power on glitch type beep but let's power it on see what it does. This green LED should come on and uh, we'll see what we get. I've got the keyboard plugged in by the way. And we have indeed got something on the screen. It's saying uh, disk A not ready, carried return. So we'll try carried return and see if it does anything. Well, we are going to key beep, so obviously the process is running. The machine's trying to start up. So what we'll do next is we'll uh, take the covers off now. The uh, assembly of these is fairly straightforward. They're quite easy to get apart. The rear cover and the front cover kind of sandwich the chassis and uh, the main support for the machine as well so when you take them off you end up with this kind of floppy metal chassis inside. Um, but what we'll do is we'll spin it round, just trying to avoid knocking the camera here and then all I need to do to get this apart is take out the screws in the back, that is one screw is missing, take out the uh, what would be four screws, in this case three screws this rear panel then should come off, so I'll unplug it, get the keyboard out of the way, and we'll take the screws out of the rear cover. And what we can do now, hopefully, is lift this rear cover out. Okay, we'll put that to one side. Now that's out of the way, we should be able to uh, lift this um, main part of the cover off. I'm just going to have to move you out of the way because I can't reach around the camera to do this. 
So just move the camera out of the way and uh, get this front, uh, this top part of the cover off and then we'll get back and see what's inside. Okay with the cover off you can see we have the main processor board, this secondary uh, display card and then we've got the uh, main video output board, the one that drives the CRT at the front. The interface or the connector for the floppy disk is down here, I'm not sure if you can see it, and the two drives normally sit in this hole here. So we've got the power supply, the power connectors, usual standard Molex type for the drives, and then the um, hard disk interface card normally sits at the front underneath the CRT. Uh, we'll ignore that for now. What I will do to start with is we'll try connecting the floppy disk uh, drive and uh, power it up and see what it does. So I'll get the cable connected, get the drive in place, reconnect the keyboard, reattach the power lead and uh, we'll see if we get any activity at all. Okay I've got the floppy disk connected, the ribbon cable is going to the connector I showed, I've got the power um, one of the power connectors connected to the drive. Uh, owner tells me these two drives work and I've got a floppy disk inserted so we'll see what it does. Um, if the drive is working at all we should get a different message and we should see some activity but I'm not quite sure if the drive is completely dead or if it's uh, just a case of it's not reading the data properly so we'll power this up. Okay, well clearly the drive's doing something, it's stepping out, it's going to the home position, stepping out two tracks, and I am now getting a different message, it's saying A, drive A, mount OS disk, carriage return, I'll try pressing carriage return and see if it tries to boot again, and it's once again going to the home position, stepping out two tracks, and then stopping, see if that's... Yeah, okay, so you probably can't see it on camera, but when we first press return, the cursor's returning to the um, boot up position, and then we're getting this um, message at the bottom here. So it is definitely responding to what it's trying to read from the floppy disk. It's not just immediately putting this message up. So it could be that the disk is not compatible with this particular machine. Um, I've got no real information. If you've got some specific information as to um, what particular disk this needs to boot from, then please let me know. It's an NCR model number is 1202-7502. That's the model number for this particular machine. So if you've got either a floppy disk image or a disk we can borrow, uh, or you know what um, images this should use and whether the disc for this black and white version is the same as for the colour, then please leave the message. In the meantime, we'll just investigate it as uh, if it's a fault and go through the normal process. Now the next thing I want to do is plug in the hard disk interface and the uh, hard disk itself. So what we have with hard disk is we have this interface card. This plugs into, you can't see it yet, I'll show you in a few minutes. It plugs into the front of the about the uh, signal distribution board. We've then got this ribbon cable that goes to the interface card and this is the interface card itself. This is normally bolted uh, to the chassis underneath the CRT. And um, this is where we believe the fault is for the hard disk. Not sure about the fault for the floppy disk. Like I said, it might just be a non-compatible disk. But what I'm going to do next is I'll turn this off disconnect the floppy disk, we'll spin the machine around and remove the main boards. Incidentally, someone did once ask me why I don't use a Lazy Susan for doing this, a rotating um, platform. I do have one, but I hardly ever use it, mainly because I find them annoying. I don't like um, the machine moving when I'm trying to work on it, especially if I'm trying to probe something. It's a good way to either damage the machine or electrocute yourself so I tend not to use them. Okay so we'll disconnect the drive and get, out, get it out of the way. So getting the cards out is very easy all we need to do is disconnect this. 
if you've been watching my series on the Z80 project, this connector is equivalent to the video connector on our Z80 board. So we'll disconnect that. The reason for disconnecting that is this metal chassis part isn't going to come with the boards. I'm going to separate them. So all we have to do is take out two screws and slacken a third. So we'll take out this one. There's another one on this side. And then somewhere on the side down here, there is a third screw. You can just slacken that one off in order to take it out. And if you slightly lift um, the cards, you can just slide them out. We do need to disconnect the power connector down here as well. And this is the, probably the trickiest bit, so they can be fairly tight. Okay, so that's out of the way. And now if we lift this and pull it back, it should just come out. Which it does, so that's the main card out. And uh, we'll, we'll have a look at this in a minute. So if we look underneath the CRT, you'll see this sloping mount, and that's where the um, hard disk interface card is normally bolted, so that would normally be fitted on there this way around but um, I'm not going to put the card in there to test it obviously it'd be very difficult testing the card with it in there what we'll do is we'll make some extenders for the power supply although I suspect this might just reach if we fish it out of there but we'll need to make an extender to connect the board up to the CRT output so I'll get the chassis out of the way. I don't think there's much wrong with this. Like I said, um, the owner's already replaced the main caps on this, along with a few other parts. So I will measure the voltages, make sure they're correct. I'll do that off camera. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, and then what we can do is start investigating the rest of the issues that we've got. OK, so this is the board removed. Alongside, we've got the hard drive interface card and then the adapter card for that. So this card would normally plug into one of the connectors on the front of this, so it plugs into one of these. You can see the screws for mounting it, holding it in place. And um, it's quite a neat arrangement, but it is a bit of a pain to fault find on. Uh, and we can test that interface card fairly easily just to eliminate it, but um, really we need to be able to lay this on the bench to do some meaningful fault finding. On the colour one, hopefully we can get away with um, just laying these cards on the bench and trying to fault find on the hard drive interface card. All we'll need to do, of course, is make up an extender for this connector. This one might be a bit more tricky because we've got the fault with the floppy drive interface. And although you can flip the card over and work with the card upside down, it makes it a bit um, less... It's, it's not as easy. It's easier if you can properly access all the cards. So what I might end up doing is making an extender to allow us to extend these connectors. So you've got these two connectors here. I'll just uh, lift this off. Hold the two parts together. So you can lift this off. Now the problem is of course I'd need to make some extenders for these so we can connect this on the bench rather than having it sandwiched um, on top of this one. Um, this one's not too bad because we can move it to one side once we've got the interface card attached and that will then give us uh, obviously very good access to everything and if we want to attach the logic analyzer for example or probe the board it will make it very easy to do that. So the way this is attached we've got this it attaches to the connector as I showed and then at the bottom of this card we've got these four connectors and uh, these are for the cable that goes through to the hard disk. So this will support up to four hard disks, and there's one of these cables for each. The other end, of course, connects to the hard disk itself. And um, we've got this secondary connector over here. So it all connects together, connects the hard disks. So I'll grab a hard disk and we'll have a look one of those. In fact we'll look at both the hard disks that we've got with these systems because they are different and if you've never seen a vintage hard drive you might find it interesting. Okay so we've got the first hard drive 
as you can see they're somewhat bigger than modern hard drives but um, this is actually the smaller of the pair the other hard drive is this one this is how big hard drives used to be in the early days of PCs earlier hard drives were much bigger than this but you can see how um, bulky they were and this is the small capacity of the two so very interesting um, if you were taking one of these apart don't take it apart if it's working or you want to use it but taking these apart and looking inside is quite fascinating obviously I'm not going to do that this is not mine and um, as far as I know this works so we don't want to damage it same with this one um, the two drives as you can see they look very different but the interface is uh, almost identical it's not quite identical but they connect in much the same way as a floppy disk it's just slightly more complex and you have the data stream cable separate so um, what we'll do in the next video is I'll get all this set up so we can power it up on the bench and we'll start investigating the fault. We'll probably start with the floppy drive fault, see if we can make any progress with that. Um, it would be nice to have one of the two interfaces working. And then if we can get that working, then we'll move on and start investigating the uh, hard disk issue. Um, for now, we'll start with this plugged directly onto the main board. Um, that may prove to be uh, a bit difficult getting the uh, access we need to the right parts so I might have to put the project on hold until I make up some uh, extenders that being the case what we'll do is we'll move on to the colour unit and um, investigate the hard drive fault because I believe the floppy drive interface works on that one so quite an interesting machine as you can see they're quite easy to get to quite easy to work on and uh, hopefully we will be able to get this working at some point so to make life easier in fault finding with the two machines I've made a couple of extension cables so this one's for the power supply and this one's for the video out to the uh, CRT driver I've also popped out the plastic um, clips that hold the secondary board in place so I can just easily unplug that if I want to without having to fight with the clips also avoids the possibility of uh, damaging these these are quite uh, brittle once they get old and um, I can carefully remove them make sure I don't damage them constantly taking the board in and out and then when I'm finished and it's working we can put these back in so uh, I've got the two extension cables plugged in we've got the keyboard plugged in we've got the um, boards laying on the bench so we can easily access them and uh, we've got the floppy drive plugged in as well and so what we can do now of course is just power this up and uh, we'll just check to make sure it comes uh, up the way it should we should hear the beep I'll move the camera across and uh, let you see the monitor unless something uh, untoward happens so we'll power up the machine we should hear the beep as I said a couple of test LEDs here and then they should all go out which they have just watching the CLT screen I'll just move you across and as you can see it's come back to life so we're all ready to start fault finding on this and that's what we will get into in the next video.